containers that are available. So obviously, collections of things are extremely popular in programming. So uh, given that, the library that is standard, which means that every compiler that uh, claims to be standard C++ and be confirming with a certain standard, you know, the previous standard was uh, 1998, the current standard is 2011, but all of them since 1998 will provide a certain uh, level of uh, facilities in the standard library. So it's not just programming language, but the standard tells you what the standard library will also give you when you have a, 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 a compiler that is conformant with that particular standard. So let's take a look at this. Um, uh, so um, we're, uh, like I said, we'll be looking at uh, facilities that are uh, available in the standard library. And uh, STL has originated <coughs> in, in 1994, right? So uh, standard library keeps code portable. I would also say that it keeps code very safe because you don't have to say new that often. Normally, when you write most of your code, if you're using standard library, you don't have to say new or delete. It will all be doing that for you, doing all this memory management work. Very effective. Uh, the C library obviously pre-existed pre before C++, absorbed um, almost everything from, this, from the C programming language. So C standard library is part of the C++ standard library. So such things as uh, uh, the length of string, str len, or str copy, or mem copy, or mem cmp to compare memory. Um, also, uh, all uh, all uh, library functions or all C f uh, library functions to work with files like um, you know open file, close file, uh, read write. All of this is readily available part of the C library. So that is is part of it. We've seen strings already. So strings, obviously, the string is the string that comes with standard library uh, is uh, part of it. Uh, input output, of course. You know, we've talked about stream facilities that work with with files, stream facilities that work with console, um, and uh, all of this can be readily re redirected. So stream and even string string, right, which works with text. Uh, is also uh, a part of that stream library. So we've seen these components as well. Uh, some of the numerical support exists there as well. Complex numbers are, you know, the library that supports complex numbers there. And uh, also uh, things such as vectors and arithmetic operators. And there are almost, um, you know, for almost any area of math, there is a, a library, perhaps not part of the standard library, but extremely widely used. So I think that uh, any math that is used with 3D graphics or, <coughs> or physics, you most certainly can find library which is free of charge and you get the highest quality code that's available. So um, the libraries are very, uh, uh, very well, uh, you know, in convenient facilities to, to deliver uh, things for you. So what we're going to explore today most of the time is going that we're going to talk about containers because of course we need collections of things, right? We need collections of things. So we need to uh, explore containers and also we also going to explore algorithms. So once you formally define containers, things such as searching, replacing, populating, filling in, sorting, uh, become just standard, you know, things to, to use uh, with, the, uh, with those containers. And so those things are also prepackaged in the library as algorithms. Now, what happens in, um, uh, in the organization of the library as it stands today. And again, we mostly are going to be focusing on, on containers and how to work with containers. Uh, we're going to be also seeing iterators. Uh, so an iterator is an object, uh, essentially a class, 
uh, the data type, which is supplied by every container. And it's a helper object to iterate through the contents of the container. So it's a helper object which basically behaves. The philosophy behind container and iterator would be this. If container was a C style array, when we say, you know, uh, int my array square brackets 10, 10, 10 integers, right? Then the the, 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 an example of an iterator for an array would be a pointer because you can say let's set pointer to the beginning of an array increment pointer uh, dereference that pointer to find out what's stored in that element move to the next element and so forth then the standard library actually uh, uses containers as if uh, you know the philosophy the, the description the the look and feel of what containers uh, are and how they behave is as close as possible to an array and the iterator to a container or iterator for container such and such will behave as close as possible to a pointer because you, you recall that you can set pointer to particular place you can dereference pointer to extract the data and you can also navigate with pointer plus plus minus minus you can go up and down in memory and so iterators will behave very similar uh, uh, thanks to operator overloading by the way because uh, operator overloading uh, makes it all possible so algorithms are simply just functions that represent ta tasks sort count copy reverse we'll see examples of that so containers and iterators are definitely C++ objects, which means that they need to be created before they can be used. Okay. And algorithms are C++ functions, right? So, so function sort will take the beginning, the place where it should start, and the place where it should end. And it will just sort whatever you gave as a collection of elements. All right. So that makes sense. Um, uh, 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 those containers, container is the most, um, you know, significant component here because before we can iterate or, al you know, apply an algorithm, bless you, uh, to something, we need to have a placeholder, right? So uh, the, the good news is that uh, we're going to take about template classes a little bit today as well so that to say that uh, containers are suitable for any data type. Okay, um, so um, uh, let's uh, take a look at, um, well, first of all, let me make sure that I download this little program, which we can use today to, uh, so say show and folder, we can, we can try this program to do some animations here today. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the syntax. So first is a vector. Vector is a dynamic array. Right, so vector is a dynamic array, and let me just, without with much delay, let's just create um, a project, and uh, that project would be something like STL demo. Okay, uh, create a project. We'll add a main function and we'll try some some something uh, very simple. So add just a blank file. So something like this. So if I say int uh, my array of say 100 integers. This is uh, the creation of an array. You already know that uh, there's n nothing, nothing really uh, different other than int you know element element zero let's say zero 
right? Then int element uh, one, then int element two, and so forth, all the way down to int uh, element uh, element mm, you know ninety nine, which will be the last so uh, allocation. Doing this or doing this from the computer standpoint is exactly the same, right? So whether you have 100 integers on the on the on you know part of part of what you're doing here in local scope or you just create 100 integers in one declaration it's the same thing computer really doesn't care right the integers will exist in this form or they will exist in this form really doesn't make any difference right what uh, does make difference is that this can be very uh, this can be much much more convenient to you as a programmer because you can have an index to go to different places in this array whereas over here how do you create a loop to jump from element 0 then element 1 uh, to, to, to 1 and to 2 and so forth this is a nightmare right so whereas this is manageable very manageable but both will be allocating equally the same type of memory block and they're just plain integers sitting somewhere. 